By now, I'm sure you all have seen the internet's newest superhero, Morning Man. Yes, Morning Man has recently been going viral for videos of his morning routine, and at first I didn't really understand it. It basically just looks like my morning routine, although it kind of looks like you cut out the part where you're supposed to dust your calculators. But yeah, for the most part, pretty ordinary morning routine. But I watched it again, and I realized why everybody must be making such a big deal out of it, and it's the pool scene. You can see throughout the rest of the video that as the time changes, the clips change, which makes sense. At 4.55 a.m. he's doing this. At 5.30 a.m. he's doing this. At 5.49 a.m. he's doing that again. But here, when he jumps into the pool, it's 7.36 a.m. When he lands in the pool, it's 7.40 a.m. This was a four minute jump into the pool, which means the clip must have been really sped up. So I thought somebody needs to run the numbers here. Using some of the basic projectile motion stuff you would learn in physics or calculus, which you don't even need to know physics or calculus to understand, we can come to some conclusions about about Morning Man's four minute pool jump. If he did indeed spend four minutes in the air, I wanna figure out what his initial jump velocity must have been and how far he must have jumped. And once we see those numbers, I think we'll really know whether he spent four minutes in the air or not. Of course, in order to conduct the analysis, we need a model of his motion. And we will use a common and reliable model for projectile motion, which is a parabola. That familiar shape which occurs when you're flirting with expressions like x squared. Modeling projectile motion with parabolas isn't exactly right, but it's a good approximation and it's very practical. So you may be thinking, okay, if we can represent the path of Morning Man's travel with the y equals x squared sort of equation, we'll be able to figure out a whole lot of stuff. But just just x squared is an upwards facing parabola. That of course is not going to work. So what's the equation going to look like? Of course, Morning Man's dramatic jump into the pool looks more like this. It's what we would call a concave down parabola. For a shape like this, it would be easy enough to write y as a function of x. That's probably familiar to everybody. However, for our purposes, there is a superior strategy. Although we could write y as a function of x, it's not so much that Morning Man's altitude depends on his horizontal distance, more so it's that his position on this parabolic curve depends on time. His position, xy, is a function of time. So for our model, we're actually going to use what are called parametric equations, where the parameter is time. When you first start graphing functions, you usually think about y changing as x changes, but right now we're going to think about xy changing as time changes. In case you've never heard of this sort of thing, let me just give you a simple classic example of where it's really useful. When you first learned about functions, it might have seemed a little odd to you that something as simple as a circle isn't a function. You would have seen how, oh, we can represent a particular value of x by drawing a vertical line to carry out the vertical line test, and we see that a circle doesn't pass the vertical line test. For a single value of x, X, there may be two values of y on a circle. So on a circle, y is not a function of x. But the points on a circle can still be described as a function, we just need a different parameter. Consider an angle with one ray lying on the x-axis and the other opening up to some point on the circle, and let's say that this angle has a measure of theta. For any value of theta, we get a particular point on the circle, and as theta increases, we will get other points on the circle. When theta is zero, we get this point on the circle, and when theta goes 360 degrees all the way around, we get back to that very same point. Point is, for a single x value, there may be multiple corresponding y values, but for a single angle here, a single value of theta, there's only a single corresponding point on the circle. 
The actual parametric equations that use this angle involve trigonometry. Typically, we say that x is equal to cosine of theta and y is equal to sine of theta, and this will trace out that circle as a function of the angle. So that's just a classic example, but we need parametric equations for a parabola, not a circle. We will also need sine and cosine, but you don't really need an in-depth knowledge of them in order to follow what goes on here. In the interest of time, Time, I'm just going to tell you what the parametric equations for projectile motion are. You would learn where this comes from in a physics or calculus class. X is equal to V0, that's the initial speed with which Morning Man launches himself into the air, multiplied by cosine of alpha. Alpha is the angle of elevation, the angle at which Morning Man jumps, multiplied by T, which of course is time. T here is the only thing that's changing, that's the parameter. V0 and alpha are both fixed from the moment that Morning Man jumps. We're going to assume that the only force acting on Morning Man, besides his muscular legs thrusting himself into the air, is the acceleration due to gravity, so we're going to ignore air resistance. So there's gravity dragging him down, which will need to be considered here in the equation for y. The equation for y looks similar at first. It's v0 multiplied by sine of that angle of elevation, alpha multiplied by t, but then minus one half multiplied by g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, multiplied by time squared. So these are Morning Man's horizontal and vertical positions as functions of time. At a particular time, we could plug it in and figure out where he is in his jump. Of course, we know that over here at the start of his jump, t is equal to zero. That's before any time has passed. Once he's jumped, time starts ticking. And here where he enters back into the pool, t is equal to 240. That's 240 seconds because four minutes have passed. He spends four minutes in the air. Now you might be thinking, wow, this is a messier description of the parabola than I had anticipated, but it's not so bad. Some of this stuff we can replace with numbers. For example, g, gravity. We know what that is. That's 9.8 meters per second squared. Of course, it's dragging Morning Man down, but that's captured by the negative symbol. So we would just put this in as 9.8. Next, what about alpha, that angle of elevation for the initial jump? Of course, the angle at which Morning Man jumps is going to affect his path of travel. If he jumped straight up vertically, that would actually be best for airtime because then all of his force is working directly against gravity instead of some of it being used to move horizontally. But of course, a straight vertical jump is not what he did. From the video, I could see that being roughly 45 degrees. It's certainly not a straight up vertical jump. It's not a flop into the water, a zero degree jump. So let's agree to call it 45 degrees. The other thing interesting about a 45 degree jump is that it's actually optimal for travel distance. So in that respect, we are giving him the most charitable assumption. Here's a little animation in Desmos showing how the parabolic path of travel changes as the angle of elevation changes. It's going between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. The vertical blue line is at 45 degrees, and you can see that when the angle of elevation passes that, that's when the parabola is gaining its furthest horizontal travel. It's when that angle of elevation is at the vertical blue line, which is 45 degrees. All right, we are filling in the gaps here. G is 9.8, and alpha is 45. And in case you were surprised when I said that V0 represents Morning Man's initial speed, not velocity, let me take this opportunity to point out that the direction is captured by alpha. So that's why V0 can just represent speed, direction is captured by that angle. As for the speed, we're going to need to figure that out, his initial launching speed. We need to figure that out in order to figure out how far he travels in his jump. Just how far has he gone in those four minutes before landing back in the pool? Now, we're not going to be able to use this equation to figure that out 
but we can use this equation. Because when Morning Man splooshes into the pool, we don't know how far he's gone, we don't know what x is, but we do know that his y coordinate has come back down to zero. So we can plug y equals zero in here, and t equals 240, that's 240 seconds, that's when he lands in the pool, plug those in, the only unknown that's going to be left will be v0, and then we can solve for it. So writing out this equation, we're plugging in 0 for y, this is equal to v0, which we don't know, multiplied by sine of alpha, alpha is 45, this is getting multiplied by t, which is 240 seconds at that moment when y equals 0, and then minus 1 half times gravity, 1 half of 9.8 is 4.9, so we'll just put 4.9, again multiplied by t, but squared. We can go ahead and add 4.9 times 240 squared to both sides. And now we really just have to crunch the numbers and divide both sides by this to solve for V0. Sine of 45 degrees, as many of you will know, is root 2 over 2. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and bust out the calculator. I suppose this should do. <laughs> so on the left, we have 240 squared multiplied by 4.9. We have to multiply this by 2, and then we need to divide it by the square root of 2, and then finally we need to divide by 240, and then v0 will be all by itself, and we find that it's about 1,663 meters per second. All right, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious because this is awfully fast. Again, this suggests that Morning Man launched himself into the air at a speed of 1,663 meters per second. That's nearly five times as fast as the fastest land vehicle ever recorded, which traveled at over a thousand kilometers an hour. That's the Thrust SSC, pretty rad. Anyway, let's figure out now with this number how far Morning Man went in his jump. All we have to do is take this information and plug it into this equation, and that's going to spit out here what x is when he comes into the pool. So what is x? Well, it's going to be v0, which is 1,663, multiplied by cosine of alpha. Cosine of 45 degrees is actually also root 2 over 2, same as sine. And then this is getting multiplied by t, which is 240 seconds. That's four minutes in the air. After that, he lands in the pool. All right, let's bust out the calculator. So we have 1,663 multiplied by the square root of 2 divided by 2 multiplied by 240. And so this suggests that he traveled a horizontal distance of 282,220 meters. Instead of x, perhaps we should call this d for the distance traveled. x, of course, changes as time changes, so we'll just call that d, and we just figured out that horizontal distance d is about 282,220 meters. That's the length of about 5,644 Olympic swimming pools, or for the American watching, it's about 2,573 gridiron football fields. And I'd say that about checks out. I mean, this pool looks pretty big, and he did jump pretty far, but that initial launching speed still does seem a little suspicious. Psychosomatic habits why you're so so